Um, it's the February 2nd Winston-Salem Rex and Park Commission meeting. I'd like to call us to order. Okay. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay. Due to the governor's recent order, all members of the Recreation and Parks Commission are participating virtually. For virtual meetings, commission members will be muted until asked to be heard. At that time, they will be unmuted and recognized at that time. When there is a vote, it will be necessary to take roll call vote. At, <clears throat> a commission member will be recognized and will raise their hand to state their vote. Today's meeting is a public meeting. Per the notice, citizens can listen to the meeting. If they contact the city manager's office to make necessary arrangements, or they can also um, live stream on the city's YouTube channel. And the meeting can be accessed at the city website. And the recording will be made available um, by next Tuesday on the city's YouTube channel. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do a roll. Sorry guys, I'm trying to... Kathy Gondry? Here. John Gunkel? Here. Tyg O'Gara? Here. Sean Hawkins? Here. John France? Here. Bob Hartwell? <clears throat> Bob Hartwell? Hang on. Can you hear me, Mr. Hartwell? Okay, we'll skip him and come back. George Peterson? Here. Sheree Ingram? Here. Joseph Cassidy? Here. Taylor Ansley? Here. Okay, and Bob Hartwell? I think he was having some audio issues. Can you hear yeah. me? Shouldn't be. Here? Okay, he's here. We have quorum. Alicia, do you hear me? No, I can, yes. Okay, okay so right. you got me as present. Okay, thank yes. you. Thank uh -huh. you. <clears throat> okay, we have quorum. Okay, my turn. Yes. <laughs> okay, so we'd like to get approval of the January minutes. Felicia, would you mind bringing them up for us? Yep. So we can just look at them real quick. So when we met in January, we primarily looked at the um, capital project review. Allison walked us through that. Yes. So did, has everybody had a chance to review the minutes? If you haven't, yell, and we can go through that in more detail. Otherwise, I would like to ask for somebody to, um, how do you say it, vote to approve the minutes? We need a motion to approve. A motion, them. thank you, a motion to approve the minutes. I'll make a motion that we will accept the minutes. A second. Thank you. A second. A second. Okay. Can you please state your name for the vote? That's John France. I'm Hartwell. <clears throat> Are, Are there any, Go does ahead. anybody oppose? Okay, thank you. Motion to approve the minutes is carried. Thank you, Felicia. Okay, so a review of the agenda then. The next things to cover, uh, William's gonna do a, a presentation of the deferred maintenance. I did want to just, I think during the business section, I can give just a quick update. Is that okay, Felicia? Uh, yeah. And William? I didn't, William is here, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, so I, I just wanted to say that the commission is um, very excited and eager to get a better understanding of what our role and responsibility is and how we can support the Rex and Park Department. Um, 
We, there are three areas of focus that we have identified that we're looking into. One is just in general, what are our roles and responsibilities and how does that documentation align to it? The other is um, community engagement. So we've got George and Sean that are, are looking at that. Um, and then the third area is just maintenance, which is um, Bob and Joe are taking a look at it. I have had a very brief conversation this morning with John Larson, our um, city assistant John attorney. Larson. And he's helping getting some clarification about how formally these groups need to conduct business, whether we need to actually call ourselves formal committees. And, and if so, we would, we would come back to the commission and um, get an approval to form these groups as committees of our commission. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that those three focus areas are have been identified. Um, and there's a great deal of interest right now in the maintenance. So without any other distractions, I just thought I'd turn that over to William so he can give us an update on, on where we are with maintenance. Okay, thank you, Chair. Uh -huh. So we're prepared to uh, work with John um, and the city manager's office to uh, come back and get a list uh, of, uh, of all of your questions and concerns and come back to you at a later date and provide an update to you uh, so that everybody's on the same page. Uh, and Kathy, you and I will probably uh, have some one-on-one -on -one discussions um, uh, to get more clarity and answer additional questions and get some more details on some of the answers that you're looking for but we'll bring that back to you um, at a future date uh, here shortly. Um, Felicia, could you not stop? There we go. And I'll just share my screen. Um, at the request of the Recreation Parks Commission, um, as well as City Council, um, we, uh, we were asked to look at how the 2018 geo bond requirement funds that were allocated to recreation as part of that bond referendum, how they have impacted our deferred maintenance assessment. Um, and so what I've done is prepared a presentation for you that I will begin here right now. All right, can everyone see the entire slide presentation? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna go through the presentation. Um, if you would, if you have questions, uh, I'd like to ask that you keep hold those questions to the end of the presentation. Maybe take a note of the particular slides so that I can come back and reference that uh, with your individual questions as we move forward. Um, for the city of Winston-Salem has many parks, recreational facilities, natural areas for passive and active recreation. to help make uh, Winston-Salem a desirable place to live. Over the past 10 years, millions of dollars have been invested to address decades of deferred maintenance. But due to multiple years of deferred maintenance, the city went to the Center Recreation and Parks Department. Uh, department's infrastructure, buildings, lighting, and other amenities were in need of immediate attention. Documenting the overall deferred maintenance needs of the entire recreation and park system was the focus of the assessment. A departmental overview uh, park, uh, the City of Winston Salem Recreational Parks Department provides activities, amenities, recreation centers, and parks and greenways for the entire community. Um, those park amenities include playgrounds, picnic shelters, tennis courts, soccer and football fields, baseball and softball diamonds, multi purpose fields, basketball, volleyball courts, pools, and splash pads. Um, all of those facilities that are on and operated are listed there on the slide. Um, in front of you, which are the number of basketball courts, the two lakes, which are Winston Lake and Salem Lake, the two 18-hole golf courses. Um, in addition to the amenities that are shown on the screen, the city is also responsible for maintaining 26 miles of greenways and over 3,800 acres um, of parkland. Maintenance is a collaborative effort. Um, the overall park maintenance is um, broken down into three main focus areas. Our recreation maintenance team, our team from our teammates from vegetation management, as well as property and facilities management. Um, the maintenance, uh, the, da the, the daily maintenance that's performed throughout our park system in terms of trash, trash collection, 
uh, playground inspections, uh, setting up ball fields for, for league play. Um, all of that is performed by our recreation maintenance team, which is led by Renata Owens, who is our park superintendent. Um, vegetation management um, staff are charged with land uh, with maintaining all of our landscapes, turf, and trees within our park facilities. Um, that also includes ground maintenance, flower beds, um, mowing of ball fields, greenways, and trails. And property and facilities management, uh, they maintain all of the city's uh, vertical structures, including our 17 recreation centers. And they, they provide service and support for uh, electrical needs, HVAC, uh, plumbing, roofing needs. Uh, they also take care and handle and service the buildings at Salem Lake, Historic Cadabra, and many of our other outlying facilities. Inside of our recreation centers, the custodial services are also managed by our property facilities management team. Um, and these three main focus areas provide the overall maintenance for our parks um, and greenways throughout our entire park system. The deferred maintenance assessment um, was broken out into four main categories. Um, the consultant looked at um, overall park maintenance and looked at priority safety concerns. Um, we looked at asset protection, um, where the future, in many instances, the future cost of repairs could be much greater um, if they weren't um, addressed, uh, addressed sooner. Um, and general deferred maintenance issues, um, which were not assigned as safety or asset protection. They also looked at pools and splash pads. Um, they looked at both of our golf courses that we own, Winston Lake and Ross Park. Um, and they also looked at our recreation centers. <clears throat> um, many of the, the ideas and recommendations for the recreation centers were related to the mechanical and electrical plumbing upgrades within the centers. Uh, however, um, the consultant did not go through and do a very detailed analysis and breakdown of um, and, and itemize the, the improvements or issues regarding recreation centers. They did provide overall cost estimates um, for the mechanical, uh, electrical, and plumbing at those particular locations. Uh, but it's something that we're, as part of our strategic plan, uh, to come back and request funding to complete that assessment for our recreation centers. All parks within our park system were assigned grades. Um, negative points were deducted from a score of 100 based on deficiencies uh, by maintenance category. <clears throat> the more issues that a park has in that maintenance category, the lower the score and the lower the grade which was assigned. And the assigned grades were given relative to other parks in the system. Now, not all of our parks um, have the same amenities um, as they serve different purposes. If no data equipment exists, existed for a given category, for instance, there are no courts or sports fields or that particular park, then their score and the report will show a not applicable or no grade assigned. Um, as part of this assessment, there were 11 um, locations that were not evaluated, uh, including Second Street Park, uh, British Woods, Long Creek, West Clemensville Road, either because they were newer parks uh, or they were undeveloped or they did not have those traditional park amenities um, that would allow the consultant to provide a score for them. Um, included in that were several new park facilities, including Nelson Malloy Park um, and Second Street Park, which had master plans completed, but what either were under construction or had yet to begin construction um, prior to the uh, deferred maintenance assessment being completed. Um, there were four parks in addition to that that were under renovation at the time of the publication that were not rated, which, which included Kimberly Park, Lachlan, Quarry, and Bloom Park. The diagram that's shown on the screen now uh, provides an overview uh, where the deferred maintenance um, was the least and where it was the greatest. Um, we've separated that into five different categories where uh, the lighter blue uh, is low deferred maintenance, and then it gradually increases to low medium deferred medium deferred, high medium, and high deferred maintenance. Um, it's also clear to point out that, um, that many of these locations where uh, the deferred maintenance uh, were either at its lowest or at its highest were sometimes and oftentimes um, uh, related to one or two or more specific facilities that have um, since that time uh, 
have, have, had, have had improvements made to them. Out of the, um, out of all of the bond money, the 30, the 30 uh, plus million dollars that was allocated to the regulation of parks departments part of the 2018 bonds, $14.5 million of that uh, were allocated specifically to parks um, identified in the deferred maintenance assessment as of December 2020. Um, $5.1 million out of that 14.5 has been spent to date. Um, and the breakdown for that $5.1 million is shown in the, uh, is shown on the map and shown in the, in the legend on the screen. There's been a little over $438,000 invested, completed to date in recreation centers, over $741,000 for golf course. 778,000 for pools and over $3 million for park improvements. Um, there were significant differences between the maintenance, um, significant differences, let me just, I can't get my screen to slide over, sorry about that. There were significant differences between the maintenance needs of different parks. Um, the parks with the fewest maintenance needs included Anderson, Luther, Lockland, Mercer Plaza, Quarry, and Jameson, which were uh, some of our newer facilities or undeveloped. Uh, parks with the highest maintenance needs included Miller Park, Winston Lake, Gorham Boulevard, Hobby, Haynes, and Happy Hill. Um, it's interesting to note um, that six of the parks with the highest maintenance needs also accounted for over approximately 30% of the uh, total deferred maintenance costs for, for parks. Maintenance costs for the six pools um, <clears throat> uh, totaled uh, roughly $914,000, but uh, the majority of the work there uh, with over 50% of the, the deferred maintenance costs were associated with boats and um, as well as Polo Group, both uh, recently undergone renovations. Here's a park summary um, snapshot to give you an idea um, of the number of um, projects, uh, 2018 geo bond projects that are managed um, by recreation our engineering department, as well as property and facilities management. Our recreation had a total of 12 projects, engineering had a total of 13, and PFM had a total of 11. Um, out of those projects, um, we have three completed, uh, recently completed by uh, recreation. Uh, zero yet have been completed by engineering, but are in uh, progress, uh, is being made on those projects. Seven have been completed by uh, PFM with four projects uh, remaining in progress. Um, to give you an idea of the projects that have been completed, uh, the 14th Street Tennis Courts, repairs to the Grace Court Gazebo, um, repairs have been complete, Greenway Park Pavilion, and the restroom roof replacements were complete. The Haynes Park Storage Building um, was complete, Tennis Courts in Carver, um, Little Creek and Miller Park both had their uh, recreation center and shelter roofs replaced. Um, the playground at Sprague Street has been replaced and renovated. The Winston Lake Golf Course HVAC replacement has been complete. Uh, the Winston Square stucco repair and paint painting has been complete. And there's, there have been various playground resurfacings um, across the city that have also been completed. Here's a further breakdown um, of the previous slide that shows the total deferred maintenance that was identified for that particular project in the deferred maintenance assessment. Also on this diagram, you see the committed uh, 2018 geo bonds that were identified for parks. We've also included uh, two thirds bonds, which we receive every other year um, uh, that have been applied to uh, deferred maintenance. There's a column that shows the total deferred maintenance needs that have been completed and the remaining needs. And that's also a project uh, update to kind of give you an idea in more detail on where those various projects are. And that information is continued over to this slide, um, all the way down to the playground services, which are on uh, this diagram, which is shown to be complete. Um, to give you an idea of how the projects are broken down, for instance, if you look at Winston Lake Park, the Winston Lake Park renovations phase two, you have the golf, um, the repair and dam, uh, repair dam and dredge, dredging of the lake, restroom and picnic shelter, roadway, then you have the playground renovations. All of those individuals, um, those line items are individual projects that are associated with Winston Lake Park that were counted each as their own individual project um, in reference to uh, which ones are complete and which ones are in progress. 
um, under recreation center, there were 16 projects identified um, under our recreation centers um, that had 2018 geo bonds uh, applied to them. Um, the number of projects that recreation is currently managing are seven. Um, currently, there are zero of those projects complete. However, I believe six out of the seven of those projects, or five out of, excuse me, five out of the seven of those projects are the gym renovations, uh, gym floor renovations, which uh, have recently been uh, awarded a construction contract, and the contractor is uh, prepared to proceed with work uh, on those. Engineering is managing one of those projects, which is the Bellevue Recreation Center. Uh, there was $500,000 that uh, city council approved to be used from our parkland acquisition slash development um, that's being used as part of that, uh, part of those renovations. And $586,000 has been allocated for recreation set up um, projects that are being managed by a property and facilities management team. Um, out of those projects from uh, out of property facilities management, four of those projects are complete. Four of those projects are in progress. The projects that are complete um, are the Brown and Douglas Recreation Center front stucco repair. Um, and there's also an HVAC replacement there at Brown and Douglas. Uh, Miller Park Gym um, HVAC replacement has been complete and the Miller Park Gym lighting um, has been complete as well. And a further breakdown and analysis of, of all of the projects that had funding allocated to them as part of our 2018 field bonds is shown in the spreadsheet um, on the screen now. Um, you can see the individual projects associated with each, each location. Um, the security improvements is a project that Recreation and Parks and our Information Systems Department are jointly managing. Um, it is a project that they're looking to send out to bid uh, to hire a, a firm to come in and install these, these security upgrades, um, to finish the security upgrades at our various recreation centers. Um, in addition to um, these projects, our PFM team has been able to complete the roof replacement at Paul Russell Recreation Center, as well as replacing the shingles and doing a roof coating on the recreation center as well. This slide provides an update on our pools and golf courses and their, uh, the current statuses of those. Um, if you know on the golf courses, uh, there were no 2018 geo bonds identified for maintenance. Uh, but using our deferred maintenance report, uh, we did have a request uh, through our two thirds uh, bond bonding cycle where we were awarded, we were given $800,000 that could be used to replace the irrigation systems at both Reynolds Park Golf Course and Winston Lake Golf Course. Um, those, um, both of those projects are complete. Um, what I would like to point out um, on this slide as well is that even in addition to the two thirds funding that was allocated um, by the city for those irrigation replacements, um, at Reynolds Park Golf Course, um, the city has invested $41,000 uh, and Winston Lake Golf Course, $26,000 uh, for tree replacement and tree removal. Uh, we've had some issues with, uh, with uh, many of our greens not getting enough sun. Um, and it was a uh, almost an emergency issue uh, because we also had to uh, we used um, some of our uh, remaining two-third barn money to replace uh, several of the greens at Reynolds Park Golf Course. And if we didn't remove the trees, we would have had this uh, similar issue at Winston Lake and a current issue at Wells Park. And so there was, although there was no <clears throat> 2018 deal bonds identified, there were two thirds bonds that were identified as well as this, the Recreation Parks Department use operating dollars to um, take care of some one-time emergency issues at both of those locations. Um, at our pools, um, there, were no, there was no money identified for Middle Springs pool. Um, as part of the 2018 bill bonds, and that's uh, mainly due to the fact that we received funding in prior years to address many of the maintenance issues there. However, um, we did receive funding $1.7 million uh, total um, for Bolton, Wells Park, Polo, Sprague, and Kimberly. <clears throat> um, the work at Bolton is complete, uh, which was a full replastering. Um, there has been a construction contract issue and awarded for the plaster, the replastering at Wells Park. Uh, pool. That's why that one's under construction. 
Um, the replastering at Polo um, is complete. Um, Sprag Street Pool uh, is currently being being designed. Uh, we had a, a meeting with the council member of the ward and a decision was made to convert the pool at Sprag Street into a splash pad. Um, and it was mainly due to the to, to attendance, um, so reoccurring maintenance costs. We think that due to the popularity of many of our splash pads across the city, that um, that might be a much more amenable solution for aquatic relief during some of our water months here in Winston-Salem for, for that area of town. Um, and there are renovations that are being made to the Kimberly Park pool, mainly to the pump room with some of our sand filters and other operating equipment. Uh, the majority of the issues that we had were located there inside the pump room at Kimberly. Mm -hmm. As a summary, um, $14.5 million um, was allocated from our 2018 bill bonds. Um, as of December 2020, $5.1 million has been spent and completed for those projects to date. Um, park maintenance is imperative um, uh, for a number of reasons. <clears throat> uh, the city will, will continue to be strategic in addressing these items identified in this park maintenance assessment, investing in a park infrastructure to, to mitigate further decline and assessing the need to modernize system amenities based on community needs and resources. We continue to move forward, uh, providing the daily maintenance tasks that we will all perform on forecasting future maintenance needs throughout our park system. Managing deferred and routine maintenance will continue to be a priority as we move forward with capital planning in our years to come. And now I will open up to any questions that you may have. And I can also refer back to any slides that I need to um, reference. Do you want me to start? Sure. Okay. Um, we made reference early on, I, I, I'm not sure which slide it is, to future funding requests. Um, I don't know that it was to a particular project, but the $24 million you just referred to that hasn't been reached, what's the intent? Is the remaining bond money supposed to be applied to those projects or do we have another funding issue? Um, very, the, out of the 30 plus million dollars that was allocated to recreation, 14.5 of that 30 million specifically address needs that were identified solely in the deferred maintenance assessment. The remaining funds went to either make other improvements or there were replacements to other areas throughout a park system. Uh, in reference to looking at future funding, um, this document, the deferred maintenance assessment, is a tool um, that we use and have used and will continue to use as we move forward to request funding um, as we work our way through the deferred maintenance assessment and begin to address those issues. Um, there isn't any additional funding right now, um, but it's not solely funding that we will rely solely on the city for. Um, there are grants that we can apply for. Um, there's two-thirds bonding. Uh, there may be future bond referendums. Um, there may be uh, public-private partnerships where funding is allocated to address the current maintenance needs. Um, but basically, the deferred maintenance assessment provided a snapshot of where we were. Um, and it's used, currently being used as a tool um, to justify our capital requests as we move forward. So, so is it fair to say that if 14.5 was solely to the deferred maintenance issues in the report, the total report is almost 44 million. Yes. So most of that difference is funding we still have to find. Is, is that is that a roughly fair statement? That would be correct, Mr. Artwell. Yes. I have a so, quick question. Um, well, you mentioned the 24 million, I think, is was needing funding. Uh, so there was like 44 in deferred maintenance that was identified, 14 and a half came from the bonding. 
you subtract those two, that doesn't equal the 24. There's certain, there must be some other funds someplace else. Maybe I missed it. There is Mr. Gunkel and Mr. Royston uh, briefly touched on some of the two third bonds that are available every other year that the city programs to help support some of the maintenance needs. And then we also handle maintenance in the um, recreation department through the, the regular operating budget. So you, so you start to um, try to address the maintenance needs from several different sources. Okay, I, I got it then. So that's how you arrived at the 24. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah, I have, I have one question I'd like to ask. Um, this uh, was any money allocated to this Muddy Creek um, cleanup that they're trying to to get uh, settled. I know they're over budget in this uh, in in getting this uh, settled. I, I, is, did any of this bond money go to that particular? Uh, are, you, are you referencing the construction? Are you are you referencing the um, stormwater and the utilities upgrades that are being made from Muddy Creek all the way up through the Mill Creek project? Yes, that's what I'm referring to. That's not a recreation and parks project. That's being uh, managed by another department. Um, I would dare to guess that it's our utilities department, City County Utilities, that's managing that. Okay, so no money was allocated from from uh, the 2018 bonds for that particular. Item. So it, it wasn't part of the, the, the part piece, Mr. France. I can um, follow up with um, uh, Assistant Manager Rao on that piece because I know there was a separate um, bond report that goes to the Bond Oversight Committee that has a specific funding source for that piece, and we can provide that to you. Okay, I know uh, it's Coach Hage. He's on that committee. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. I think we gave a report to him. him last week. Yeah, I can I can ask him on it since he's on that committee. I was supposed to serve on that committee as well, but I decided to come to this committee. Uh, oh, understand? Yeah. So, so I was on the bond, you know, 2018 bond committee as well, but I didn't know exactly. You know, I know they're having some problems, but. But where are they going to get the money that they have, have already over, you know, over expenditures with? I mean, where are they planning to, you know, what they plan to do? You know, it's, it's over budget. Mm -hmm. So where are they going to get the money to, uh, to finish that project? So, you know, typically, and I mean, we run into this on our recreation projects as well. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the, the bond funds are set aside in specific categories. Mm -hmm. Um, but you, you can you can make some movements within those categories. So a lot of times if we may have um, a project that may come in, you know, under budget um, in recreation for one particular project, there may be another one that's a little over so we can um, use those dollars to help with another project. Um, we do have to make sure that we're, we're careful in thinking about um, kind of the allocations um, across wards um, because those were, we, we made commitments to voters in terms of how those dollars would be used on projects, but also specifically um, by wards as well. Yeah, that's what I was, you know, that, that was my, uh, you know, uh, concern was to, to make sure the uh, all the money that we have allocated to uh, the um, parks and recreation it would be you know it would go actually to the to the needs of the of the community yes, they will. And, and not to some other you know you know project that you know found itself in a you know in a in some kind of uh, fix so to speak I guess you could say without without having the money to complete their projects. Well, you're correct. The, the money that was set aside and allocated for um, recreation projects, we would have to follow that bond order. So all of those dollars would go for recreation projects. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Can I ask a follow-up? So, William? Oh. I just want to ask a follow-up to what John was talking about. Sure. Is, is there, is, there seems to be some confusion in some people I've spoken with about it. Who's really responsible for maintenance on the greenways? Um, Green, greenway maintenance um, is twofold. It's uh, it's a shared responsibility. Uh, my staff takes care of the uh, uh, solid waste disposal, empty and trash can, maintaining park benches, signage, et cetera. Uh, a vegetation management department is responsible for mowing, and that mowing can either be completed by uh, actual city staff or contracted out. 
Okay, so that leads to a next question because that doesn't address um, the extensive flooding that's going on in Muddy Creek that lasts for days after a storm. Gets frozen sometimes, it's just plain dangerous. It's just very deep water. It's clear what has to be done with it. Uh, the parking area that was built two years ago off Robin Hood Road is an absolute mess a lot of the time. And I'm, I, I, who's respond, whom do we speak with to see to get those problems addressed? If they're, um, Muddy Creek is an enigma of a greenway because it's in a low-lying area and geographically it's a bold. And it doesn't take much more than a sneeze for that greenway to begin to have water retention issues. Um, any of once we are once we're made aware that there are issues, or after heavy heavy rain events or flooding events, our maintenance staff does get out. Uh, and typically, they'll broom they'll broom the greenway. They will go out and make improvements and regrade and rescrape the that parking lot. Um, and try to do what they can to get as much of the water off of the greenway as possible. Um, but uh, keep in mind is that not only is it the Muddy Creek Greenway, but we have 26 miles of total greenways throughout our park system. And uh, maintenance staff um, can start at Salem Creek Greenway, work, work their way through uh, all of our greenways. But after those storm events, that's, a, that's an area that falls under, under our department. If there, are, if there are specific issues or if you notice, uh, typically people will send us an email or give us a phone call uh, with pictures or without pictures to let us know where those issues are. And we try to direct staff in those areas as quickly as possible uh, to get those issues addressed. If we ever find that it's going to take a substantial amount of time to make those repairs, we will close those portions of the greenway until we're able to get out and, and safe them up for the public to use. Um, but the water retention is something that we've had several meetings with our stormwater department and engineers and people who are much smarter than, than I am trying to figure out ways to mitigate that. And it's just a very, very difficult task. So where does that, where does that, I don't want to belabor it, I guess, too much, except that I sent the photographs a long time ago. So Mr. Howell, well, I, I, I want to make sure that um, we're, we're, um, answering the question, you know, that you're asking, you know, staff is well aware of um, the problems along Muddy Creek. In, in some respects, I think with, with that Greenway and several others, we have the same problem along Sal uh, Salem um, Creek uh, Greenway that we're, we're fighting against nature. Those areas flood, um, and we were aware that those areas flooded when those Greenways were built. That's part of the reasons that, you know, they, they were put there. Not much else can be built there. Our, our storm water um, team is, is, is aware of it. Um, but if you're if we're looking for a fix to where those areas would never flood again, um, that's highly unlikely. Um, th that area would will, will probably continue to flood because of just it being in a low lying area. Um, but we do try to make sure that after heavy events, you know, we're out there as soon as possible to try to get the, the uh, trails back open. Um, but we can continue to make sure that, you know, staff is aware of that concern. Um, we are, we're aware of it here in our office. Okay, let me, let me I don't want to run it into the ground, but that really wasn't what I was asking. Sure. Flooding a lot, of course. Well, the last time I was there during a flood, which was on Veterans Day, there was between eight and ten feet of water on the Greenway underneath Robin Hood Road. Mm -hmm. it's the biggest flood I've seen yet. I wasn't mm -hmm. asking about whether or not it floods. They all flood. What I'm asking about is fixing the problem after the fact, so that we don't have 18 inches of water in some places for a week in broad daylight. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going on, and, and that's why I sent the pictures. It's very clear what has to be done. It has, there have to be swales put in so that the water can flow back into Muddy Creek after the storm, and that's what we're not doing. And so so if, if stormwater um, is looking at it, you know, I'd like to be put in touch with them to find out what's going on, because I think it's pretty clear what has to happen, particularly in the in the enormous amount of flooding and muck and everything that, that exists in the area of Jefferson School, exacerbated, I might add, a little bit by the sewer project. It got worse after they were done, but. So can I interject for a minute, Bob? So in kind of the spirit of the Windsor Salem Rec and Park Commission, we're, we're really seeking to understand how the commission can help support the Rec and Park um, Department. 
So Money Creek, I know, I've heard about, I understand it's in a floodplain, but maybe there's a potential that we gather some, we coordinate the feedback that we're getting from our citizens and maybe we help the Parks and Rec Department, excuse me, the Rec and Parks Department justify why more funding be requested from the city in order to address the problem. So I think that's kind of an example of the spirit that we'd like to get into. How can we help? Because this has been going on, this particular problem has been going on for quite a while. I know it's a struggle, it won't be perfect, but maybe it can be made better. I, I, I totally agree with, with that. And when, when you look at the maintenance report, um, drainage issues was one of the key issues that um, factored into the, the rating that certain facilities received. So I think that if there is a way to, or if you want to aggregate the feedback that you all are getting um, in Muddy Creek, especially around Muddy Creek, then we can just let our stormwater staff know that. And then that becomes part of the prioritization process that council has to consider with these, when these projects are coming forward. Um, but I do think that it was probably be worth a little bit further investigation to actually try to determine what it would take to control some of the flooding. And we can have a conversation with our stormwater team about that because before you can figure out what is it gonna, the dollar amount, you need to figure out what the solution is that we feel like would help mitigate some of the flooding. Um, but that's a, a consistent um, concern that's in several of our park facilities. I mean, a one-time improvement would help you with ongoing cleanup every single time there's an event. It would. So, would. so that would be good. Yeah, being able to prioritize which area that, you know, that improvement takes place because Muddy Creek is a problem, but there are also other greenways that are having problems now. Um, for instance, we're dealing with a major project in Washington Park to help with storm water and some drainage improvements there um, that were washing out car, uh, the, the walking paths and things. And that was one of the bond projects that's moving forward. So in general about the presentation, I think it's great. I'm str this is kind of feedback. I struggle with some of the numbers. Like one time you said 43 million, then there's a 30 million, there's a 14.5 million, there's a 24.1 million. It sounds like there might be three different departments that actually do the work. And then there are different funding sources. So you've got this list of things that need to be done and an amount of money that that you need. You've got three different groups maybe that do the work. And then there's um, there are projects that we haven't actually gotten any funding for yet. So William, in that you had two slides that looked like a spreadsheet. Does that kind of lay that out better? I mean, you went through it pretty quick, but that, yeah, 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 yeah. So you've got maintenance in the assessment, and then committed, deferred, naming deferred. So are, are you treating all these with the same priority? And then where are the things that you haven't gotten money? So I think you said there's a priority list for 24.1 million, but maybe you don't have funding for that yet. Anyway, I'm just, I'm not actually asking you to answer the question right now. I'm just wondering if there's a way to put this together. So you've got a list of all the things that have been identified, those that you have estimates for, how much it's gonna cost, um, those that you actually have allocated money, those that you don't have allocated money and all that prioritized. <laughs> so you gotta, like this I think is a good start but just a snapshot that helps put all of it together. Cause it's really, it feels, and again, I haven't been studying it, but it feels just a little disjointed. The, the, the parts were prioritized based on their score in the deferred maintenance assessment. Okay. And so that provided the priority list for us. The, 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 the report was completed uh, was started and we hired the consultant in 2017, September of 2017. It took them a little over a year to get everything complete. But by the time the report was complete, uh, there wasn't an opportunity to align the funds from the bond, the 2018 bond referendum, with what the report was going to show. The actual report wasn't published until March of 2019. And so 
what we did was go back and look at how, look to see how those 2018 bonds, how that funding impacted the deferred maintenance assessment. And so if you go through and look at every part in our park system and look at their ratings and how they were rated within the deferred maintenance assessment, that gives us the priority list. It is, they were based on safety, safety issues, things that could impact, um, that would directly impact the public uh, or our staff uh, for that matter. Um, and that was all factored in to the park, the parks score. That's how they were rated either A through F. And so we had that priority list, which is uh, in the deferred maintenance assessment. What this, this report did was kind of give you a snapshot of how that funding addressed, began to address the needs of the deferred maintenance assessment. We I'm just wondering if you can add that rating to this chart so that we can see, you know, all the most critical ones have been done and the ones that are less critical haven't been done or whatever. I add, I add, I mean, at the park rating, um, those, those individual park projects that are listed on the screen kind of show what their park ratings were in the in the report. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Okay. So we can okay, we can add that. Hey, William, this is John. Um, may, I, may I ask a question? Uh, just get, so we, so we can understand. Bringing back, would you would you like to see the ratings for the for the projects? that have been funded or are you looking for the the ratings for each park facility like what's in the the maintenance report what, let what me backpedal let me backpedal how about you guys are going to give us this material let us have a chance to look at the material bob and joe are kind of our focal points on really digesting and understand it so let me backpedal and let's put together a more comprehensive list of what we think you know, give you some feedback. Does that sound okay? We can work with you, you know, to do okay. that, to make sure that we're drilling down to get what the, the commission needs. Yeah, thank you. William, it's, oh, while we're on this line, can you go to the next slide? So if I'm understand, reading this correctly, at the bottom of the one, two, three, four, fifth column, we're $488,000 short in funding for deferred maintenance just on parks. The financial resources have been identified to address the rest of it. So what that's showing is um, like the $290,000 for playground um, resurfacing. Um, that's actually two thirds money. Uh, what that, that column shows is a total the best way for me to explain this is to give you an example. So for instance, say $5 million was allocated for Salem Lake yep. um, from the 2018 bond referendum. Out of that $5 million, maybe only $1.5 million of that $5 million specifically addressed needs in the deferred maintenance assessment. But we still captured that entire investment into the park. And so there are some locations such as Salem Lake um, at Washington Park where more funding was identified um, or allocated for those projects, but if they did not, um, it, it may not address all of the deferred maintenance needs identified in the report. There are still gonna be remaining, um, remaining needs, but there's some of the improvements, some of the money, for instance, that the money that was allocated, $2.5 million that was allocated for um, Washington Park, a lot of those are new improvements that are being made, replacement of buildings and not actually addressing, fixing what's there. A lot of that is replacing what's there. And so the, this column, some of the, the overage, where you see the red numbers, excuse me, where you see the red numbers um, shows um, additional money that was applied for that particular location. However, once we go deeper into that particular park project, there, are, there will be additional maintenance needs that may need to be addressed at those specific locations. Of the 43.8 million of identified deferred maintenance needs, how much funding has been identified and what's, what's the remaining gap? 14.5 um, has been identified. Um, 
okay. from the GO bonds themselves. Um, that does not include two thirds money or any operating money. That's just strictly from the 2018 GO bonds. Uh, that leaves us with 24.1 remaining deferred maintenance needs in, from the assessment. And how much are we getting from two thirds? Our two thirds totals. One point eight four million. So we need about another twenty eight million, roughly. No, the twenty four, the twenty four point one is the okay. overall number. Okay. Uh, regardless, regardless of the funding source. Uh, brother Wim, uh, what what is left in the uh, recreation bond? What we have left total? Total left to spend? Yes. Um, I can get that number. If you give me a second, I can pull that up from our website. It would be project specific. They're, they're all, all of the dollars are allocated to a specific project. Okay. So, so it, it's not that there are bond dollars that are uncommitted or unassigned to a particular project. Okay. And I know when, uh, when, you know, you don't need a certain amount of money in one facility, it can be allocated somewhere else. Is that correct? It is, and we and we try to um, look at that as as the projects conclude, and then also keeping in mind the ward that the project is in mm -hmm. um, when we start to reallocate dollars. That's right. Yeah, and and so uh, I just wanted to know uh, how much money has been invested uh, so far in the parks and recreation. Um, as a whole, do we have that number um, from, from the 2018 bonds? Yeah, we, we can get that for you. Um, some of it is captured on the um, bond tracking website, but we can get that and provide it to you. Okay. I, I mean, you know, it's, it's all we're going to get from the, uh, you know, I mean, I don't see, you know, how we can, you know, get any, any more money generate any more money is only thing we can do is just move money around when one thing's completed and if money is needed somewhere else it's allocated somewhere else because there's a certain amount the um, the council voted on that we were going to get right for parks and recreation and so uh, from from that bond referendum until we get another bond referendum you know um, some of these projects probably will they be completed or will they um, continue to be renovated? Um, how will that work? We'll, we'll continue to prioritize the items um, based on the scores that are in the deferred maintenance study. So each time um, we're, we're doing our budgeting process through our regular operating budget, but also when we're doing our, our two thirds, which is also part of our operating budget, we'll continue to program in as we are kind of chipping away at the that deferred maintenance number, but it's gonna happen over a period of time. Okay. Uh -huh. While we're also maintaining current facilities and, and the new facilities that we're bringing online. Okay, all right, thank you. you so when's the next opportunity to ask for more money? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. No, I mean, no, I mean net new money. We we haven't had conversations about um, when council may be interested in a in a new bond referendum, um, but I mean at the earliest you would you would be pro probably looking at at least two to three years before another bond referendum referendum is considered, um, and then the council would have to go through a process of determining whether or not what which specific projects or areas they would want to target. Gotcha. Okay. So we have, I'm sorry, we have six minutes. Go ahead, Bob. Are we going to receive this? Uh, are you going to send us this presentation, William? It will be sent to the commission members, yes, as part of the minutes. Question. Um, in November's minutes, there's a reference to Whiting Turner Construction uh, having a role in all of this. Where does that stand? Um, Whiting Turner, we're, we've partnered with Whiting Turner to make some improvements. They wanted to do some community, community engagement and wanted uh, to look at a park um, where they could come in and volunteer services, volunteer some time, volunteer materials to make improvements to that particular park. 
Uh, we started that process with them uh, as a joint effort. Uh, we're working uh, closely with them. We're doing a lot of the pressure washing. They've completed, uh, I would dare to say, 70 to 80 percent of the work there. Uh, they have a few remaining items uh, to do that are some of that are going to be weather dependent. Um, but Renata Owens has been working uh, very closely with them. And uh, she could probably give you a more detailed update as to where we are today. Okay. I'd like at some point, maybe it's the next meeting, but to know uh, specifically what they've done, where they've been, which parks they've been operating in. There was a reference in, to eight parks. I think the first one was uh, oh, it's on 6th Street. Um, there was a list of parks that they were involved with, and I'd like to know what's happened with, the, uh, I don't know whether that's appropriate now or in March, but find out what they've been doing and how that integrates in everything else we've been talking about. Some of, some of the some of the repairs that they're making, uh, the, the original locations that were presented to the commission were possible locations. Um, it was not intended to uh, for them to be doing work at all of those locations. Um, the one part that we chose out of that list was um, Crystal Towers. And so they've solely been doing uh, and performing work there at Crystal Towers. Uh, once the work is complete, we will go back through uh, and look at the improvements and efficiencies that were corrected at Crystal Towers and update our numbers and reference to the deferred Okay, thank you. So, Felicia, what else do we have on our agenda? We still have more on the agenda, correct? And William, what, what I think we'd like to do is just have, have some time to review the material and then provide you with some feedback. Okay. Is that okay? Yep, yeah, that's fine. William, can you stop screen sharing so Felicia can put the agenda back up, please? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do now. There we go. I don't think I have to make through. And while she's doing that, any other commission members have anything you thoughts if you have thoughts about the material that's been presented to you um if you can get that to joe and to bob and then they can help us consolidate any of that feedback from the deferred maintenance please william thank you this was very helpful and tasha really appreciate you joining us today <clears throat> Thank you all. I, I know this is a topic of interest to uh, the commission and to our, our council members as well, where there's a, a lot of needs in our park facilities, and that was clearly identified when the, the maintenance report came in. So I appreciate you all really taking an interest in this as well. Thank you. So I think we, uh, the, uh, Leah, <laughs> Felicia, we wanted to get an update on what's going on with Hobby Park and the trees that were planted in the um, flight plan path. Do we, we have what, two minutes left? Renata, do you have an opportunity to take a couple seconds and give an update on where we are with the trees at Hobby Park? Yes, sir. Um, good evening, good afternoon. How are you all doing? Good. Okay. Um, currently right now at Hobby Park, we will be conducting a meeting on Thursday with the developer as well as the contractor. Um, there was nine trees that had been identified that were in the flight plane um, in their obstruction. And what we have done is the developer as well as the architect, we had to take a design back to our engineering department as well as our inspecting department and get a new permit. With those nine trees, we have identified where they will be removed and where we will replant them so that they will not obstruct anything with, in regards to the radio controls. Um, we will begin that process probably on Monday. Um, so we will work with them. We will meet to make sure that we mark all the trees that need to be done. Um, the drawings and everything have been signed. The architect has signed off on them and as well as our inspection department. So that has been solidified. Um, I can forward to Felicia a copy of the actual plans of where the trees, which ones will be removed and where they will be moving to. And she can share that with you and send out with the minutes. 
So John Gunkel, is there somebody that that should be shared with on the the remote control airplane? Yeah, actually, I'd sent a note to Renata the other day, and she responded with that. And I had copied um, Vance Jones, who's the president of the, the flying club out there, so he's aware of it. Okay, okay, good, good. Was there anything else on the action items, deferred comments, Felicia, that we need to follow up on? No, there was not. Okay, and then what about your department updates and information? Is there something there that you guys wanna cover? Uh, that Leah, do you have anything? Or William, do you have anything additional? In lieu of time, if you would like, uh, we can send uh, a follow-up email out to all the commission members with the uh, with any updates um, that Leah, or any additional updates that Leah, uh, Greg, or or not have, uh, so they can be shared with share with you. Um, okay. That way. That'd be great. That'd be great. So I know next meeting there's been a request to cover the renaming of a park, um, and. I'm again, I'm going to be meeting with John Lawson, John Gunkel and I will be just to try to get a better understanding of what, how we should establish these three focus groups and how formally we need to be conducting our business um, and just getting some more clarity around what our roles and responsibilities are. William, I believe you asked uh, John Lawson to attend our next meeting. Yeah, if I, I asked, uh, spoke to John Lawson that he will be attending our next meeting to uh, further explain and answer questions that you all may have. Okay, terrific. Kathy? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, one last detail. You discussed with William the uh, uh, public works on February 9th has been put off. We've had conversations with um, Councilmember McIntosh regarding public works, Mr. Hartwell. I, I uh, wanted that because it gives us a chance to catch up on everything we've been talking about today. Mm -hmm. Joe, yeah. I think, you know, to gather our, our maintenance uh, data and put together what we're trying to put together to help out with this. So I thought that, I think Mr. McIntosh, and I thought it was premature, so it got put off. I just didn't want William thinking that somehow that program was still on, because I understand it's not. No, once it got delayed, I was one of the first first to know. Okay, good. <clears throat> you were one of the first people to what? To know. Oh, okay, good, good. Okay, um, so if there's nothing else, can I have a, is there anything else from anybody? No? Okay, can we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Thank you Second. all. All in favor? Second. Hi. Any opposed? Okay, thank you all. Have a good day. Thank you.